everyone, it's Kim and welcome back to Bookmarks and Breadsticks. Welcome back to Bookmarks and Breadsticks. If you're new to my channel, my name is Kim and I love everything in the food writing space. If you're new to food writing, food writing is a subgenre of nonfiction that covers everything from food history, world and travel, ag tech, and also just the history of food stuff. So I'm here today to bring you 15 books I am super excited to see that are going to be released in April, May, and June. So we're in a little bit of a different setup today. I have not figured out how to properly screen record my computer. Um, probably user error on my part. So you're gonna get a lot of covers right here in this space. And my camera is precariously tipping and on top of my other computer monitor. So I'm trying to look straight ahead because that's where my computer is and you get more of my face versus a lot of me looking down. And you can still see I am, I am tipping. Okay. Okay, we'll see how many books I can... Oh, come on, buddy. So we'll see how long this camera decides to stay put in its precarious position, but let's go ahead and get started. So the first book on my list is actually a March release, but it comes out March 29th, so I thought it was good and it was worthy to be included. And that is The Domino Story, how the innovative pizza giant used technology to deliver a customer experience revolution. This is part of the business storybook series on Amazon. I should... I'll, let me back up. I found all of these anticipated releases through Amazon's filtering on their website. I want to be clear though that I don't actually order my books through Amazon. I will have a video that will come up either before or after this one that shows you guys how I shop for my food writing books. I don't buy books on Amazon because honestly, because one, we should be supporting our independent bookstores and small businesses. And two, none of the books I order do I actually ever need two day prime delivery. Do I love the feeling of a gift arriving? Yes. Am I really going to read that book that urgently when I have a TBR 200 books long? No. So if you can, let's not use Amazon. Let's support our small businesses. I will link all of these books below through bookshop.org. If you don't know what bookshop.org is, 10% of your purchases made on bookshop.org go to serve independent bookstores globally. I do get a little bit of a kickback because it's an affiliate link, but the goal is, is that you can pick whichever local bookstore you want to support with your purchases. So I personally support right now Open Books, which is a nonprofit in Chicago. So even if I'm not in Chicago or I can't buy the book straight from Open Books website itself, I always am giving back money to them with every other book purchase I'm making because of bookshop.org. So sorry, let me circle back. The Domino's Story is part of the business storybook series. So it's food writing because we all know Domino's Pizza. And when I think of Domino's Pizza and their food trackers, their cars that are specifically designed now to keep your pizzas warm, they've done a lot of really innovative things. And I would love to see someone actually evaluate Domino's Pizza from a business standpoint, because frankly, I'm a Pizza Hut girl. That is what I grew up loving but I'm really interested to see what the success is because when I think of where you can get Pizza Hut versus how global Domino's is, Domino's is doing something right. The next book out comes out on April 4th and this is Red Sauce, How Italian Food Became American. And this is food history and really the story of the Italian immigration that came to America and really transformed Italian food and how it became American food. Uh, pretty straightforward title. I really love this cover. It doesn't look too red. It really looks like that light pinkish tomato sauce. And it is written by Ian McAllen. Next up coming out on April 5th is My Aki Tree, a chef's memoir of finding home in the kitchen by, by chef Suzanne Barr with assistance from Suzanne Hancock. This is obviously a memoir, a chef memoir, which is one of my favorite types of food writing to read. I also love that she is a woman of color and I'm gonna to continue to diversify my reading. I actually don't know a lot about Chef Suzanne Barr. So let me click in, which sorry, I know I'm not recording my screen so you can't see it. So let me read this for you. For fans of The Measure of My Powers and Notes from a Young Black Chef, a memoir about food, family, and the recipes that brought one woman home when she needed it the most. Suzanne Barr's journey from a chef started when she was 30. Her mother was diagnosed with cancer and she moved home to Florida to take care of her. Suzanne 
escorted her mother to doctor's appointments, bathed her, and kept her company. But the hardest part of the experience was she didn't know how to cook for her. She didn't know where to begin. Fast forward to the summer of 2017, when Suzanne became the inaugural chef in residence of the Gladstone Hotel in Toronto. I've been to the Gladstone Hotel, how cool. She wanted to create a menu that represented who she was as a, as a chef, and it emerged as a love letter to her mother. Her rite of passage menu, as she called it, changed her. It started her on a journey that has brought her closer to her mother, to her ancestors, and to her Jamaican heritage. This sounds amazing. I cannot wait to order this. I might even pre-order it. That's how psyched I am. Next up is another memoir coming out on April 19th. Call Me Chef, Damn It! A Veteran's Journey from the Rural South to the White House by Andre Rush. So Andre Rush is a... You know, he was a chef that served in the White House, and he is from a military background. He is also a man of color, and I love seeing all this representation that's coming out. Um, let me read the description for you, too, because then this is a chef I am not personally familiar with, which is also why I'm going to buy the book so I can learn more about him. What does it take to go from growing up in a Mississippi housing project to become a master sergeant and a celebrity chef serving the White House under four United States presidents? Call Me Chef, Damn It, is the inspiring story of Andre Rush, who became an overnight sensation in 2018 after a photograph of his now famous 24-inch biceps went viral. However, his journey to that moment could never be captured in a fleeting moment. I mean, this sounds really exciting. Again, I'm loving how much diversity and chefs of color I'm seeing getting published I really want that diversi diversification in food writing. I'm very, very excited. Next up, out on April 19th, I'm trying to keep these at least in month order, but you know, remember that publishing dates can move back and forth. This is a book I mentioned in my Q1 list because it's because I think the date moved. This is Slave, Slaves for Peanuts, the story of conquest, liberation, and the crop that changed history by Jory Lewis. So prior to working at Halo Top, I actually worked on Planter's Snack Nuts. So I worked for Mr. Peanut and learned a lot about peanuts. I worked with the National Peanut Board for the two years I was there and got to actually visit different peanut farms in the South and really kind of fell in love with this super legume. It is so water efficient. It is so good for us and it doesn't get the respect it deserves. I'm really excited to learn more about the journey of the peanut because the peanut is not indigenous to the United States. It came over, I believe, as part of the transatlantic slave trade. So I'm really excited to dig deeper into the history of this peanut. Also coming out April 19th is Ending Hunger, The Quest to Feed the World Without Destroying It by Anthony Warner. So this is definitely going to be more food and environmentalism and food and sustainability. I think what I've been listing, listing so far, you've seen a couple memoirs, you've seen a couple food history books. Now we're looking more at future facing, what we can do to help save the planet. Um, I'm super excited to read more about this. The cover is also very nice, very eye-catching cover, I would say. Next up, another April 19th book, A Place at the Nayarit, How a Mexican Restaurant Nourished a Community by Natalia Molina. This is a restaurant I've actually never heard anything about, um, but when an entire restaurant gets its own book, it's got to be impactful to the community. So let me read a little bit of the synopsis. I'm just reading straight from Amazon's listings. Now, they're a couple paragraphs long, so I'm usually just only reading for you guys the first one. Um, I'm sorry. I, sometimes I feel like I should be more prepared and have each synops synopsis memorized for you. It's just not my style when I record, to be quite honest. Okay, let's find out a place at the Nayarit and what it's about. In a world that sought to reduce Mexican immigrants to invisible layer, labor, the Nayarit was a place where people could become visible once again, where they could speak out, claim space, and belong. In 1951, Dona Natalia Barraza opened the Nayarit, a Mexican restaurant in Echo Park, Los Angeles. With a place at the Nayarit, historian Natalia Molina traces the life's work of her grandmother, remembered by all who knew her as Dona Natalia, a generous, reserved, and extraordinarily capable woman. Dona Natalia immigrated alone from Mexico to Los Angeles, adopted two children, and ran a successful business. She also sponsored, housed, and employed dozens of other immigrants, encouraging them to lay claim in a city long characterized as anti-Latinx racism. 
Together, the employees and customers of the Nyarit maintain ties to their old homes while providing one another safety and support. This sounds amazing. This sounds like a mo I want it to be a movie. Like these are the stories in food writing I think need to be shared. To me, food writing and food connects you to other cultures and other people that you might not know or understand otherwise. Am I ever going to live the Mexican immigrant experience? Of, no, of course not. But I think food writing has this ability to create stories and compassion and teach sympathy and empathy because food is universal. I think hunger is also universal. I think everyone has experienced hunger in some way, obviously on a spectrum, but that's what I love about food writing and the stories, whether it's memoir or it's food history of a specific restaurant and what it does for the community. I'm really, really excited to read this book. And I hope more of these kinds of stories get adapted into motion picture, whether it's documentaries like Chef's Table or High on the Hog. I, I really am excited to read this one. All right, I'm doing one last check, but I think that was all of the April books. It is, okay. Let's move into March. I'm going back in time. Let's move into May books. Wow. May, not many coming out in May. Um, first up, Catching Hell, the insider story of seafood from ocean to plate. This is by Alan Ricca and Joe Muto. It is just as it sounds like we are going to investigate the world of seafood, uh, the supply chain, the demands, what it's like. I think a lot of people maybe have watched, um, oh gosh, what is that Discovery show? when they're on the boats and it's very dramatic. Uh, Catching Hell? No, that's the name of this book. Um, you know what I'm talking about. I think some people have a little bit of experience understanding what it's like to watch men and women work on the trawlers, but I am interested to see if we're gonna get a better look at the current supply chain of fish. Gosh, what is it? Deadliest Catch, that's the name of that franchise. Deadliest Catch. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, next up we have Breaking Bread Essays. Oh, sorry, the other book comes out May 17th. And Breaking Bread Essays from New England on Food, Hunger, and Family by Deborah Spark. This comes out May 24th, 20 May 24th, excuse me. So this is actually an am this is actually an anthology um, up from chefs of the New England area. It says nearly 70 renowned New England writers gather around the table to talk food and how it sustains us, mind, body, and soul. So this is a collection of essays from top literary talents and food writers. Um, you'll find some people in here with Lily King talking about chocolate chip cookies, Jennifer Finley Boylan on homemade, homemade pizza, Richard Ford on why food doesn't interest him that much, and uh, Nancy Harmon Jenkins talking about scallops, just to name a few. So I don't think everyone in here is actually a food writer as much as it's people talking about food. And profits from this collection will benefit Blue Angel, a nonprofit combating food, food insecurity by delivering healthy food from local farmers to those in need. That is awesome. I love knowing that a book I'm going to read and purchase is also going to the proceeds are helping somebody else and fighting hunger, which is something I actively try to do with Read It and Eat. That is super cool. Maybe there's a future future Read It and Eat collaboration where this book is featured in the box and then we're helping even more people. I'll keep that in mind somewhere. So I only had two books for the month of May. So let's move forward into June. So in June, coming out on June 14th, is Extra Virgin Olive Oil, The Truth in Your Kitchen by David M. Newman. Now I have already done a read and discover about olive oil because I read the book Extra Virginity. So this is the, another book exploring extra virgin olive oil and some of the you know, how people get away with labeling, sources of origin of olive oil. And I haven't seen a lot of other olive oil books come out. So I'm very excited to see if Newman has new information since the publication of Extra Virginity, which came out, out I believe, in 2017. So it's been about five years in publication history, I think, since I've seen another olive oil focused food writing book. So I am super interested to see what he has learned. Oh, I just found a book for, from April that, I, April that I accidentally skipped over. Um, Rum Rebels, a celebration of women revolutionizing the spirits industry with cocktail recipes. Um, so this is an awesome gift. I know we're ending um, Historiathon 
um, in Women's History Month, but hey, I would love to celebrate the women revolutionizing the spirit industry. Even if I don't drink it, I still like to celebrate it. So sorry, that was an April one that showed up later in this video. The third book in June is actually June 7th, and this is The Nature of the Future, Agriculture, Science, and Capitalism in the Antebellum North. I did talk about this in my earlier spring food writing 2022 anticipated releases. So this is the continuation of that that video. I'm trying to actually break it up quarterly instead of just everything far and ahead. So this is a repeat book, but I'm still very excited to read it. I will link that video up in the cards as well, and I would really appreciate if you go take a look and we can compare and contrast. See if any other books on that list are, which might get repeated farther in the future too, because I think I even talked about a couple August books. We'll see if what excites you guys, and if there's any on here you think, oh Kim, you, you gotta read and review this for the channel. So last up on the list are a couple of books that don't have release dates yet, but they're on my radar. One is Totally Pizza, The Wild Story of the World's Most Famous Food by Mark Masker. It's all about pizza, obviously. Another is Salty, Lessons on Eating, Drinking, and Living from Revolutionary Women by Alyssa Wilkinson. This looks like it's uh, more of a food history book. And finally, To Boldly Grow, Finding Joy, Adventure, and Dinner in Your Own Backyard by Tamar Haspel. Um, I believe To Boldly Grow is a little bit part memoir and also part love letter to like the experience of growing your own food. Um, Tamar Haspel is a journalist and a self-proclaimed crappy gardener. So I think I'm going to relate to this because I do try to grow my own food in my backyard, mostly in summer and fall, and I'm not always that successful with it. So I think I'm going to relate to this book a lot. When I click into the listing on Amazon, it says it came out March 8th, but it also says it's out of stock. So I'm not quite sure what's going on with this book, but hopefully I can get my hands on it. So there you go. There's 15 books that are coming out in April, May, and June in the food writing space that I am super excited about. Let me know if you think there are any that like I must have or any that you think I must have for yourself. I would love to see what you guys are jiving and vibing with. And please feel free, if there are other books on your radar that didn't make this list that I should know about, drop them down in the comments below. On your way down to the comments, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And if you're looking to chat with me elsewhere in the social media space, I have links to my social media, including my Instagram and my Storygraph channel. All of the books that I listed will be in the description below through bookshop.org. And remember, even if you're finding a book on Amazon, please consider supporting your small businesses or at least going through bookshop.org. I hope you're well, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Uh -huh.